In this video, I want to show you the process of sculpting the pose for this skirt using MGear's crank tool, which is here. MGear, crank shot sculpt, we're gonna open it here. And uh, this is actually like the perfect candidate because like the, the pose doesn't change a lot. I'll talk a little bit what happens when the pose changes substantially, but this is, this is perfect. And this will allow you a more direct manipulation than using soft mods which you could totally use for something like this, but I believe like, yeah, sculpting with, with Maya's brushes will be will be a bit easier. So the way uh, Crank works is by creating like different layers. Each layer is going to be a different like, blend shape that is going to be applied to this skirt. And not only that, but you can also sculpt in time. So you can just like sculpt in, in different layers in that dimension, but also like have the same layer changing over time. Uh, in this case, I think because like the, the animation is not again changing a lot, I think I'm going to just like handle this by creating a different layers. Um, yeah, let's let's do it. One quick thing is that uh, by default, Crank uh, has this like auto keyframe thing turned on. So essentially, what it's going to do is going to uh, key the intensity of that of that blend shape, right? Like it's gonna ease in on one frame. It's going to do like pre-hold, post-hold, and then ease out. It's going to just like come in and out. I rather handle this by myself, so I always like I turn it off. As you can see, I'm able to select the skirt because the layer, the display layer is not a reference, so we can select this. And now with this selected, let's just create a layer. I'm going to name it skirt01. And that will create here a blend shape, a blend shape node on top of like everything. Uh, and it doesn't have any any uh, sculpts yet, so let's do that. Um, and what I'm going to do is add a sculpt frame. You know that you are editing a blend shape because Maya tells you that you are editing a blend shape. So when you sculpt, when you do, when you use this tool, you want to sculpt from camera, but also have like another viewport where you can just like tumble around and you know, like not only like use the different like sculpting brushes, but also be able to do, you know, something like this if you have to and whatnot. So Crank will will capture all these all these things. So for this, what I'm going to do is perhaps I'm going to just like maximize the camera at first. Uh, I'm going to press the uh, backslash key, and when you just like keep it pressed, you can just like tumble this in in. 2D, 2D pan zoom. So it's actually like really good to just like get close here. And okay, this is what I want to do. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to select the move. I'm going to change a couple of settings here for this specific case. So I'm gonna just grab silhouette. I'm gonna make sure that we are not constrained to surface. I'm going to this like surface or surface volume, whatever you prefer, but uh, let's do this. And first thing I want to do is like I want to move this down a little bit. I'm not going to be too concerned about details right now or things intersecting and whatnot. See, like for example, this thing is moving, but that's okay. We can just like mask it later. And perhaps, yeah, we want to maybe move this a little bit. Perhaps we want to see like some, a little bit of like knee here. With B, I'm changing the radius. And there you go. See now, we can see grab silhouette is also like grabbing the back part of it. I don't want to grab the back part. I only want to grab the, the front part because what I want to do is like I want to emulate some sort of like falling a little bit. Could be like very, very subtle. But let's see if I can just like draw here. What I want to do is like something like this, and then something like this. It's kind of like get like a better a better silhouette, and because the character isn't moving a lot, this should be this should be doable. And this is like not necessary at all. Like we can use sculpting to fix, but also like to plus uh, some some of the stuff that we are doing. So yeah, I want to plus this a little bit. So let's say this is like our first pass for this. I'm not gonna care 
about this for now. Uh, so you can right click here and then just like to be safe, all layers edit off. And as you can see, like uh, now once we leave the sculpting tool, there we go. So now we have this here, right? And let me just like go up here. And it's holding up like pretty, pretty well. So what happens now? So what happens now is that uh, what Crank does is just creates like this transform. And this transform is the one that holds the blend shape, right? It's almost like an interface for you to be able to key these like on and off. If I could just like go uh, key here, then key here and then key it on, key it off, all that stuff. Like that's when I use sculpting shot, I used to play with this thing a lot where I just like have like different layers and then I just like um, key them on and off to get the, the result that I want. So let's say that this is, this is good for now. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to this part and sculpt this one. I don't want to, um, because I'm going to touch a different part of the model, I'm not going to sculpt on this layer, so I'm going to create yet like another layer. I don't want to sculpt this in another frame because then things might, might like move, might be animated. So I'm going to select the mesh, create layer, I'm going to go skirt 02, perhaps uh, contact seat, so I'm able to identify this. I'm going to uh, add a sculpt frame, and I'm going to just like go and have the other, the other view as well. and uh, something like this so I'm able to see these things better and operating in a different viewport and just like see the results on this one it's very very helpful we don't want to or you don't want to just like change things too much when you are sculpting because the the, the skin you know when I'm moving this like backwards this vertex is still driven by the skin or by the joint that is here so if I move here and then the leg moves a lot this is going to be like a, a disaster but because like this doesn't move too much i think it should be more or less fine we'll see and let me just move this a little bit we can also sculpt this one down which is another option and we don't need even to do anything like this because this is not animated we can just like do something like this and and that's it that would be it so for this we can even just like leave it like that and this is the part that you need to be careful with because i have a different layer and i'm affecting the same area that i was touching with the other layer so i'm doing this uh you know just like to to be able to to say this but when you have like different layers i believe like it might be better if you like separate uh, separate things or don't don't touch things necessarily yeah that are the same area um, this looks more or less good. Uh, I'm going to just like perhaps like smooth this a little bit so the texture will look a little bit less uh, stretched, will be more regular. And also what I want to do as well is, uh, let's see if I can go here. Perhaps I'll do it on, on the other layer. I'm going to stop right now. All layers edit off. This is the change that we did, really, really, really subtle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the first one and I'm going to remove the influence on the sleeve. So let's go here, um, edit, selected sculpt frame. We are sculpting right now. And in theory, I can just go here and there you go, like delete, like remove the blend shape that was affecting this area. go we could even just like resculpt this if we if we wanted but yeah for now i'm just like removing and uh, yeah that's more or less it and just one more thing that i want to show you when you are sculpting you are not limited only to these brushes but you can use like anything that you want in maya so for example like if i were to um, 
want the, the, the score like kind of like falling like more like vertical like in this in this direction you can either just like sculpt you know and try to get it like proper or you can do something like this where i'm going to edit the sculpt frame then we can just like do something like this with soft selection right something like super wild and i want to rotate this but if i want to rotate from here using this as a pivot point press d and that allows me to move the pivot point here and because i'm using kind of like screen space it should be more or less fine and then i can just like do something like that like like that like this and uh, really quickly allows me to just like manipulate all all these and then yeah we can we can come in and then do like small uh touch-ups with this if we if we have to something like this perhaps like bringing the roundness again like that that i wanted to to keep pushing this perhaps a little bit but yeah we can just like take the whole geometry change the pivot point and then just like transform different areas and again we can do this on this animation because it doesn't move a lot so the problem with with m gear and the problem with the sculpting in general is the way these these uh blend shapes behave on top of all the deformations if your character is deforming or is like moving a lot these these poses these sculpts won't hold for all the frames they won't hold for all the poses so you will have to animate different layers you will have to just like play like on and off almost like if it was like stop motion to to be able to have like two three four different different sculpts and then just like blending manually between them on, on all the poses this is something that yeah so this has to be has to be like that but for a case like this as you can see it's very very forgiving and that's it that's how you can use mgear scrum tool to sculpt your character